I'll be showing 12 new features in Microsoft Teams for Education. This includes Insights, Reflect, our well-being tool, computer science and coding integration to Teams assignments, and a whole lot more. So let's get started. The first new feature is a dramatically improved Insights landing page. So I'm right here in Insights on the left, and this is in every single class team. You have Insights, and we've reorganized this page. At the top, you have the most useful reports, so digital activity, assignments, reading progress, reflect, and communication. I can drill into one like assignments, for example, and there are a lot of updates and improvements to how we've laid out these assignments reports. And we'll go back. Then you still have spotlights, and this has been here for a while. It highlights different things that are happening in your class that might be interesting. So if here's an example, five students were absent from at least one meeting last week, or five students might need support next week. And then in the class overview, you have things like grade average, you have recent turn-in statistics, reflect check-ins, and lots more. So this has been a completely revamped class insights. And if you haven't been in here, I can encourage you to check it out. The second new feature is that we now have insights on rubrics. I'm going to go into assignments here. And if you add rubrics to your assignments, I'm going to scroll down and you're going to see this new chunk for rubrics. Here's an example from the English proficiency rubric that I set up. And there's the different criteria you can see, composition, grammar. So all this information I can hover and get all sorts of great insights about my rubrics. This is one I made for reading comprehension, a different set of rubrics, and it's really easy to pivot and check out that data. So rubrics and insights have now come together and that's fully rolled out. The next set of features cover Reflect, which is our well-being tool that's built right into class teams. Reflect is a great social and emotional learning tool, and it's already been out for quite a while. For a deeper dive video, you can go in the upper right, but I'm just going to show some of the new updates. So I'm an educator here, and on the left-hand side, I've clicked on Reflect, which is now pinned on that left rail. And these are all the different check-ins that I've done. I'm going to go here and click New Check-in. Now the third new feature are some new ideas to explore for check-ins. Sometimes educators have told us they want some prompts. So if I click on explore check-in ideas, on the right hand side this pane opens and there's a bunch of different options. So maybe I want to ask about tonight's homework. And it just quickly adds it right there. I go back, maybe I want to ask about your connection to peers in class. So nice little prompts to help you explore different ideas for reflect check-ins. The fourth new feature is a simplification option for emotional vocabulary. So by default, a student might have 50 different choices for specific emotions. And for younger students, we heard from educators, that is too much. Can you have some simplified emotional vocabulary? So we've added a setting here. If I drop down broad emotion vocabulary, which is the default, and that has more than 50 emotion words, I can choose simplified emotion vocabulary. So now we'll go and demo what that looks like. I will click demo student view right here. Now here are the different options. I'm going to go and ask, this is the one I did, how are you feeling about your connection to peers in class? I'll click this button. So now there are only six different words. So if I hover, I can see the feelings monster and choose the one that I want. The fifth new feature is having a read aloud for these words and descriptions. This is another top educator request. By default, the little speaker has a line through it. If I click this and now say it's on, I'm going to go back and hover. Let's listen. Curious. Interested in learning or discovering something. Let's try a different one. Grateful. Filled with appreciation. So really great read aloud. It's also a read aloud voice that has some emotion in it, which is a new capability as well. So that is the read aloud that we have. I'm going to go and cancel this. The sixth new feature is one of my very favorites, and that is breathing practice and mindfulness built right into Reflect. So up in the top, you're going to see a new panel that says, take a moment to appreciate feeling confident with a few deep breaths. So let's go and hit play. Oh, there's the feelings monster. Encouraging me to notice my breath. Let's take a breath, breathe in. Hold it. And then exhale. And the nice music, you hear the breath. It's really relaxing. This is not just for younger people. This is great for adults too. I think we all need to do a little breathing in the middle of the day help chill us out. So I can turn off the music if I didn't like that, but I really liked it. And I'm just going to close this. So the ability to practice breathing is built right in for both students as well as educators. I'm going to exit the student view and we'll cancel here. The seventh new feature is the ability to reuse reflect check-in really easily. I'm going to go up to the top here and if you hover, you're going to see a little plus and it says, ask it again. So instead of having to recreate that check-in, this one's going to be open for eight hours. It'll post it to the general channel. I'm just going to hit plus. 
and now it's going to start going through this little progress and push out a new check-in. And if you want to undo it or cancel it, you can do that as well. So that's just a nice time saver for educators. The eighth new feature is one that teachers of computer science or coding or data science are all going to like, and that is support for Python assignments directly in Teams. So I'm going to go down to the bottom and click Create and choose Assignment. We'll give this a title, and now we'll go hit Attach. I'm going to upload a Python file for my device that I already have. You could use one in your OneDrive or wherever else it might be coming from, but I'm just going to quickly upload a Python file. There's my loops.py file. I'm just going to hit the three-dot menu, and I'll say students edit their own copy. So I'm going to make this looping assignment to my students, and I'm just going to go to the top and click Assign. Now we'll switch over to the student and shows what it looks like on their end. I'm signed in as Ella, and here is my practice loops assignment. Let's open that up. And there is the Python file. I'm going to open this up. The first time you ever use this, you will have to trust it, so make sure you trust the file that's coming up. So here is the assignment. I have to define a set of functions, and there's a lot of information that I need to fill out. I'm going to speed ahead, and we're going to pretend that I've already done my assignment and I've written all the code. So let's just speed up. Okay, so here's all my code that I've written. What's really cool is I can write in the browser here, hit run code, and look at that, everything ran and all test cases passed. So that was part of my assignment to get all the test cases to pass. This is looking good. The other thing is, is this runs in the browser, it runs in mobile, and it runs on desktop team. So it doesn't matter where you are. And you also have even these files here, so I can hit save right there. I'm all saved up, edit and view menu. So very interactive coding environment. You even get IntelliSense. So in this case, I'm going to delete the word false and start typing FA, and it just IntelliSenses it right up. So really powerful Python coding right here in Teams. Now I'm going to close this, and then we're going to turn this in. Oh, there's the unicorn rainbow. Now I'll switch back to the educator and just show what it looks like in the speed grader. I'm signed in as Kara the educator. I'm going to open up my assignment, and it looks like Ella has turned hers in. So let's go in here. So here I am in the speed grader, all the interactive code. I can run the code. I can add feedback over here. Yeah, great job. All the things I would do in a speed grader, but I've got interactive Python code. The ninth new feature is taking it to the next level with Jupyter Notebook integration with Teams assignments. Jupyter Notebooks are really popular in education and computer science, and they let you have interactive components with instruction and coding right merged together. So I'll click create at the bottom and I will choose assignment. We'll give it a title, some instructions. Let's attach a PDF, and then we'll attach the intro to Python Jupyter file. Hit attach, and then upload. So I've attached my introduction to python.ipynb, so that's the Python notebook or the Jupyter notebook. Now I'm going to hit the three-dot menu and say students edit their own copy, and now I'll just click assign. Now we'll switch over to Ella, the student. I'm signed in as Ella, and here is my Python assignment with Jupyter notebook. Let's open that up. So there's the instructions, there's a PDF right here, and I'm gonna open up this file right there. So just like before, this file fully opens up inside of Teams assignments. What's really great is now I can have the instructions, the coding, everything is interactive. So if I go down here and I'm gonna say print United States, I still get IntelliSense as I'm going. If I wanna hit run here, it runs it right below and it just printed out the United States along there. So this full interactive Python notebook is fully available in Teams assignments. And just like before, you know, if I wanna save it, I can do that. I can also just close here. And now I'm gonna turn this in and we'll switch back to the educator. As the educator, let's go into the intro to Python assignment. And Ella's turned hers in, let's open that up. And just like before, now I can review all this great work in the Jupyter notebook. I can even go up here, I can add comments if I want. So all the same features that you have in a Jupyter notebook, but now right here in Microsoft Teams assignments. The 10th new feature is the ability to create a challenge assignment with phonics rules in Reading Progress. So Reading Progress is our reading fluency tool. For a deeper dive, I've got a link in the upper right, but I'm here in Insights and I'm gonna drill into Reading Progress. We've added a new feature, and this is English only at this point, for phonics rules. And this is already rolled out, so I'm gonna scroll down and down here we have phonics rules. And what this does is it analyzes the mispronunciations that students are making when they're reading words out loud and it breaks them into phonemes and then assigns them to phonics rules. So we do a lot of work to advance how you see phonics rules across your students. So you have things like consonants and vowels and all these different phonics rules are broken up. 
And if you're into reading out there, you're gonna say this is super helpful because this does a lot of work that would manually be almost impossible for an educator to break down at a phonics rule level. So the next step that we do is we allow you to pick the ones that you want and then generate practice words. So I'm gonna to go to consonants here and down at the bottom, you're gonna see this C rule. And this is the C rule where it makes the S sound like scent. So that's gonna be my phonics rule that I focus on. Now you can see I have one out of 10 rules selected. I'm just gonna keep it simple and select the C rule there. Now I'll click create challenge assignment. What it does is it pulls up examples of other words that use that same rule. Chance, city, dance. And you can even select other words like twice and maybe I wanna add space. So this lets me have targeted practice around this specific phonics rule. And now I'll click create challenge assignment. It's gonna create an assignment with those five words ready for me to assign to my students. So there's the new assignment. The challenge assignment is attached. Let's just see what that looks like. Look at that, there are the five words. So when I push this out in reading progress, that word list is gonna be there for my students to really practice and focus on. The 11th new feature is the grouping of accessibility settings and making them really easy to access in a meeting. So if I go to the three dot menu here, you're gonna see settings and I can choose accessibility right here. This opens up the new accessibility panel. You can have sign language and I'll show that in just a minute, but you can also have captions and say always show captions in my meetings. So instead of having to turn it on every time, I'm gonna turn this on right here. And in this case, I can say, you know what? It's typically we have English meetings. I'm gonna save for future meetings and I'll hit confirm. Now, every single time that I go into my meeting, I'll have captions along the bottom. You can see right here that they're just starting up because I enabled it. And if I wanna turn them off, I can go to the three dot menu here and go to language and speech and say, turn live captions off. So I can turn them off in a given meeting, but in general, it's always gonna start the meeting here because I said always show captions in my live meetings. Now we're gonna have future accessibility settings showing up here as well. So stay tuned and you'll see more of those. The 12th new feature is sign language integration with Teams meetings, which has been a long time top request. This allows you to have sign language folks prioritized on your screen in particular. In this case, I've got a sign language option. I'm gonna turn this on so I prioritize specific people in my screen. Now I can manage who those are. So if I click manage signers, I'm gonna add Mike Thulfson. Now I'm not a sign language expert, but I'm just gonna demonstrate how this works. I will choose this person here, and now he is a signer. What this means is when Mike Thulfson is showing his video, it'll get prioritized just personally for me if I need a sign language signer. I'll click save. And we'll close this. Now you'll see there's a little hand right here and that prioritizes the sign language person. I can remove as a signer right there. If I click this, it'll make him not prioritize, meaning me, but we'll leave that for now. So that means whenever Mike shows his video, it's gonna prioritize him as a sign language interpreter. Now I'm showing myself in the sign language position. You can see that the screen is much bigger in the upper right. And again, there's this little hand waving here that indicates this is the prioritized sign language person. So this is something that you can have just showing for the person who wants it. Because in this case, Ella said that Mike is the prioritized sign language interpreter. And so here he is now, meaning me, and I'm in this very prioritized spot. So even if there are other people showing underneath other videos, there'll be a much bigger spot just for me. One more example for sign language view. In this case, I'm still Ella and Mike is the prioritized sign language person. Another place to switch is up in the view switcher. So I've turned it off, but right now if I go to view and I choose sign language, watch what happens. Choose that. And now my screen is much more prioritized and this is just for Ella. So we've built it into the view switcher so you can easily switch back and forth between sign language or not. If you wanna keep up with all the latest Microsoft updates and tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get all the latest videos that I post.